It's my pleasure to also introduce our next speaker, Mahmoud Kinera. Mahmoud is a faith leader, a youth champion, and community engager. Mahmoud is also the founder of Youth and Family Circle, a nonprofit organization that gives inner city youth an opportunity to attend summer camp and year round activities. While also being married and the father of two beautiful children, he is committed to bridging the gap between different faith groups and serves as the executive director of Youth and Family Circle. I'm also supposed to warn you of his smile because I guess it's quite contagious. Please give me a hand in welcoming Mahmoud Kanyara to the stage. It's not contagious, it's outrageous. <laughs> I would like to thank the Pride Black students for welcoming me to this beautiful event. And thank you to the whole team for making this event an event of many different people from many different parts of the world. Before I start my speech, I would like to welcome one of my brothers, or our brothers, because we are from Adam. And he will recite some verse from the Quran so that all of us can hear what that sounds like so we can connect back to spirituality his name is Mahdi Osman he's been a Quran teacher for the last 10 years teaching different youth and children from all over Minnesota please help me welcome Mahdi in reciting the Quran Thank you everybody for inviting me. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace upon all of you. Um, as, as my brother Mahmoud said, I will recite the uh, surah called Surah Al-Fatiha. It is the opening uh, chapter. Every, we, pray, we pray five times a day and this is the first surah or chapter we read. I will translate after I'm done reciting in the uh, original language how it was revealed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين صدق الله العظيم this is the chapter, the opening of the Qur'an. It is stated, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, meaning that He is the entirely merciful and merciful to all mankind, whether good or bad. Also, special merciful to individuals, those who have earned that. And He is the King of the day where all humanity will be judged. It is He who we worship alone, and it is He who we seek help from. We ask Him to guide us to the straight path. And we further ask Him that to guide us in the path of those who have earned His blessing and to protect us from being among those who earn His wrath or those who have went astray. Amen. Thank you. Alright, um, I might be walking around because when I talk, I walk around a lot. 
So uh, my last time there the whole time. Um, once again, I'd like to thank everyone for welcoming uh, me in this beautiful program. And as, as I said earlier, we are all here gathered from different nations and tribes and countries from all over the world. And that reminds me of a verse in the Quran in chapter 49, verse 13. And it says, Ya Yuhannas, in Arabic, Ya Yuhannas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakri wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa khaba'ila li ta'arafu. Which means, Ya Yuhannas, O you people, inna khalaqnakum. God is saying we have created you from different nations and for, from different tribes. For what reason? God says, in order for you to get to know one another. So as a Muslim, I have to get to know my Buddhist brother. I have to find deep inside his heart. I have to get to know my Christian brother, or Christian sister, or my Jewish brother, or my Jewish sister, or anybody else. I must get to know them, and we all have to get to know each other. And that's one of the commands of God in the Quran. So today, I'm here to talk about Islam and spirituality. Our presentation overview today will be, what is Islam? We've heard this word maybe from different parts of the world, or sometimes from the news, or sometimes from school, or from friends. We're also going to talk about what does the word Muslim mean. We're also going to talk about who is Allah. What does spirituality mean? And then at the end, I will give you a very nice spiritual story that you will really enjoy. <laughs> I have a question for all of us. The question is, how many of us are spiritually rich? Some of us, the blue, we are very spiritually rich. Yes. Some of us on the red. Yeah, we're very rich. Mm -hmm. Some of us in between, we're getting there. You know, we're getting there, I'm on our way, I'll be at that room one, one day. So we're all making progress every single day in our life. Let me come back to this. By the end of this talk, I'll guarantee you 99% that you'll be spiritually rich. <laughs> And if you don't become spiritual rich, then I owe you spiritual dose. <laughs> All right? So that's the challenge. So that means I have to give it up tonight. So now, let's come back to what does the word Islam mean? The word Islam comes from an Arabic word, word called Salam, which is Peace. It also derives from the word Silam, which means to submit your will to God Almighty. So in short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to God Almighty. <clears throat> this word, Islam, occurs several places in the Quran. For reference, I just took you will see in Surah Al-Imran, if you go to chapter 3, verse 19, you will see that Islam word in there. We good on Islam? <laughs> Alright, let's move on. What does the word Muslim mean? The word Muslim means a person who submits their will, all their will, to God Almighty. And this word Muslim occurs in the Quran, in chapter 3, verse 64. Next question. Who is Allah? Allah is the name of the one and only God that we Muslims worship. In the Quran, in chapter 112, it states, the first verse in Arabic is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say, He, Allah, is one. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, the Arabs who used to live with him in the city, they asked him a question one day. 
They say we worship our gods look like this, or this is the gods that we worship. We want to know the God that you worship. So Angel Gabriel came with the revelation, and he came with this revelation to Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad said to the rest, that was, this was the answer that he gave. Say he, Allah, is one. Allah, he is self-sufficient, and he is everlasting. He begets not, nor was he begotten, and there is nothing co comparable or co-equal to Allah. So that is who Allah is. All that stuff I've said later, I'm going to connect it to spirituality. What does spiritual mean? The quality of being concerned with the human or soul, as opposed to being concerned with material or physical things. Spirituality is also a connection between you and the Lord Almighty. It's also a sacred feeling to the purpose of living. We need that purpose that drives us day to day. And it's also a growth and development within our hearts and mind and soul. John F. Kennedy, one quote that I like reading a lot, he says that this country cannot afford to be materially rich and spiritually poor. It cannot afford it. You gotta have that balance with both of them. Islam and spirituality. Islam and spirituality, it's a functional and practical as well. It's functional because it's something that's woven throughout the day of a Muslim. The whole day it's in there. And it is physical because we use our limbs to perform certain spiritual acts. And it is not exclusive. It is for everybody. It's not only for certain people. Only you can be rich. Only you can be spiritually rich. No. Everybody can be spiritually rich. Now, we said functional and practical. Now we're going to give an example of functional. So we pray five times a day. All the five times prayers has its own specific time. For example, Fajr prayer, which is the morning prayer. It comes in early. Right now, almost close to six o'clock. So someone might me and excuse me say, but I'm too sleepy, I don't want to get up. But then, the spiritually, those comes in their heart. No, you get up. Why? Because you're doing it for God Almighty. He commanded you. It hits you. Then you get up and pray. Then in the middle of the day, midday, another prayer comes in called Duhur. You might make an excuse. Oh, I'm working. I'm at school. I can't do it right now. And then you think, no. My spiritual dose. God said you got to do it. So I'm going to do it. Then the Asr prayer. Some people might be getting off work or some people might be in class. But we still stop what we're doing and pray because it's spiritual for us. And Maghrib, which when the sun goes down, I'm busy or some people might say I'm busy with my house duties, I'll pray later. No, we stop and pray. Connect back to that spirituality again. And then Isha time, which is the late night prayer, and it comes at night when it's dark. At the end of the day, when you have done all of these activities, you feel tired. You're like, man, I just want to sleep. I don't want to pray. Forget this. And then that's when your spirituality comes back and say, no, remember, you're doing it for God Almighty. So that's the functional example. Now this is a practical example. The five daily prayers have certain movements and actions. So when you pray, all these actions, it begins here and it ends like that. So that's the practical that I was talking about when we use our limbs and body to physically pray. And we also recite some verses 
and some supplication from the Quran as one of our brothers recited earlier. Now let's talk about the 24-7 mission. The 24-7 involved in spirituality. I'm going to give you an example of how spirituality is woven throughout our day. From the beginning part of the day till the end, even while we are sleeping, spirituality is there. Examples. There's a saying, when we get up from sleep, when we get up from sleep, there's certain things we say that we appreciate God who gave us another opportunity to live. Right away when we get up, we say, that connects back to your spirituality life again. Another example of the 24 mission, 24 7 mission is we say another saying before we take off our clothes and put on as well. So when we take off our clothes to go to work or to go to school, we say something, we put on the other one, we say something else. It's called supplications. Supplication. And then there's a saying before we eat, before we eat breakfast or any food, and the saying after. Say in the name of God, we eat, and then after we're done, we appreciate God for what He has given us. And then a saying for your day to be easy. We ask God to make our day easy. And then another example is another saying before we leave our house and we enter our house. So when we leave our house, we put our trust in God Almighty that He will protect us the whole day. And when we come back, we say another saying that He will protect us and we put our trust in Him. So that's the connection that, that's woven through us throughout, throughout the whole day. So throughout the whole day, we're busy. You might find a Muslim saying something and you're like, is he talking to himself? No, he's saying something based on these examples. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready for this story? Yes. This story is very, very spiritual. Okay? So I want your undivided attention. Okay? So once upon a time, there was an Imam. His name was Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal. Can you say it? Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal. Alright. So he was a really famous Imam, very famous. At that time, he did a lot of things for knowledge to get to us today. But at that time when he was alive, people knew of his name and his work, but not everybody seen him by face. Why? He didn't have Twitter, he didn't have Facebook, he didn't have Snapchat, he didn't have none of that. He didn't take selfies. <clears throat> so people knew of him, his work, but not everyone knew how he looked. So one day, Imam Ahmed, <clears throat> he decided to travel to another city. Just for himself. He didn't tell no one, he decided to travel just for himself. Follow along the story, you will like it at the end. So when he traveled, got to the city, he didn't say, Hello everyone, I'm Imam Ahmed, welcome me. He was humble, he was down to earth. He kept quiet and didn't tell anybody about his name. He had fear that everybody would say, Welcome, no, I got him, I got him. He didn't want none of that. He didn't want no praise from any human. He just wanted praise from God. So he came to the city. Now, telling anybody who he is. And then he went to a near mosque. He prayed all his prayers. Then at the end of the night, when it was time to close, everybody left the mosque, except for him. There was a caretaker in the mosque. And the caretaker went to him and said, I have to close the mosque and I have to let everybody go. So he said, can I stay? But the rule was that he had to leave. He cannot stay. So he was told to leave the mosque. Even to the point where he had to be a little bit dragged. Time to leave. 
So nearby, there was a store. A store of a man who was baking bread. And he saw the scene that happened. That this man wanted to stay, but he, now he has no place to stay. So out of generosity and out of kindness, he doesn't know who this man is. This man is a stranger to him. So he goes to him. He said, you know what? You can come to my house for a few days. I'll let you sleep over and, and visit my house for a few days. It's okay. Let's go. Out of kindness. So they went to the baker's house. Now, when he goes in the house, he sells in and he gets his place to sleep and everything is good. The imam, he notices something particular about this specific baker. He notices that every time this baker bakes his bread, he's always saying something. He's always like uttering something. So one time, the imam went to the baker and he asked the baker a question. He said, what do you always say? Why are you always mumbling? What do you always say when you're baking your bread? I see you're moving your lips. What is it that you say? The baker says, when I bake my bread, I always give my glory and thankfulness back to God. So I say, thank you God, glory to be God, thanks to be God, praise to be God. He says in all Arabic, Alhamdulillah, praise to be God, glory to be God. I praise God all the time when I'm doing my bread. The Imam had question number two now. He said, by you praising God while you're baking your bread, has it ever helped you in your life? Has it ever changed you in your life? Has it ever brought any beneficial in your life by you keep repeating this? The baker said, Yes, it has. And he said, God Almighty has accepted all of my requests that I have asked of him, except for one request that God has never given back, gave to me. Except for one request that God has never gave me that I asked for. The Imam now says, what is that request? Do you guys want to know? Yes. Are you sure you want to know? Yes. I'll finish that story next time you guys invite me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll finish it now. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, the Imam says, by you saying this, has it ever helped your life? The baker says, yes. It has helped my life. God has accepted everything I've asked of him except for one particular thing that I've asked and I've never got it from God. And the Imam says, what is that? The baker says, look at this. He said, one day I raised my hand and I said, please, God Almighty, one day give me an opportunity to see the face of Imam Ahmed. He said, one day, Give me the opportunity to see the face of Imam Ahmed. <laughs> the Imam broke down right there, speechless, didn't know what to say. The Imam said, not only has God accepted your prayer, but God had to drag me from the mosque physically into your doorsteps just to accept your prayer. Just to accept the prayer. That's what it means to be spiritually rich. When we remember God, He remembers us. Mm -hmm. And He will answer our request. Mm -hmm. Where is your signal? With God. Now, the question I asked earlier, how many of you now feel really spiritually rich? <laughs> I told you. Thank you very much and let's all grow up spiritually.